Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to log review and analysis in Domain 6 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the third of three mind map videos for Domain 6. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind map videos are one part of our complete CISSP masterclass. Logging events from multiple systems, aggregating the data, and analyzing the data, essentially logging and monitoring, is an important part of security assessment. Where can we collect logging data from across the organization? The answer is essentially everywhere. Almost every system can generate log event data. Network devices like firewalls, routers, and switches. IDS and IPS systems, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention systems servers, desktops, laptops, operating systems, applications, anti-malware, etc., etc. We must be selective, though. Many systems are capable of generating an avalanche of event data, so we need to configure systems to only log what is relevant. We also need the capability to review all the logging event data that is being generated, ideally as close to real-time as possible. It's not super ideal to review your logs and realize you've had a significant breach months after it occurred. And what are we looking for when analyzing the logs? Errors and anomalies. More specifically, what exactly are we monitoring for? Errors. If we see, for example, that our web server is generating many error 404 messages, file not found, this is a clear indication that something is broken and we need to go and fix something on the web server. Modifications. More specifically, unauthorized modifications. It's not uncommon for attackers to exploit a vulnerability to break into a system and then patch that vulnerability behind themselves after they've installed something like a backdoor. Therefore, looking for unauthorized patching of a system may be an indication of a breach. And of course, from a security perspective, one of the main things we're monitoring for is if any of our systems have been breached, being used for cryptocurrency mining, or data exfiltration is occurring, or if we are about to have a bad time with ransomware. As I mentioned, one of the major challenges is the plethora of devices and systems that can generate log event data across the organization and the volume of data that can be produced. It is very much the proverbial challenge of looking for the needle in a haystack. Accordingly, we need to use systems that can automate many of the tasks and analysis required for logging and monitoring. These systems are often referred to as SIM systems, Security Information and Event Management Systems. Before we can begin feeding data into a SIM system, we first need to enable logging on devices across the environment so that we're generating log event data. Something we have to be careful about though is limiting log file sizes on these endpoint devices, such as firewalls, routers, switches, etc. Many of these devices can generate a lot of data, but have very limited onboard storage to store this log event data. We therefore need a couple of methods to limit log file sizes, typically on endpoint devices. Circular overwrite is the idea that you set a maximum log file size of say 10 megabytes or 10,000 lines and then begin writing log event data. When the system reaches that maximum, then it will circle back to the top of the log file and begin overwriting until it reaches the max log file size again, and then circles back yet again, rinse and repeat. Flipping levels are about setting a threshold. Below the threshold, log nothing. Above the threshold, begin logging. For example, we typically don't care about one or two failed log events. We all mistype our passwords occasionally. But 10 failed login attempts in quick succession, or 50 or 10,000, we definitely care about that. Someone is trying to brute force a password. So we could set the threshold of, say, three failed login events. Below three, nothing is logged. Above three failed login events within 60 seconds, we start logging. Another important consideration when generating log data is timestamps for each log event. We need consistent timestamps. We need timestamps in the same format, same year, month, day, and 24-hour clock. This way we can more easily correlate events from different systems because they have consistent timestamps. We also need the clocks in all of our systems across the environment to be synchronized. It's very difficult to trace how an attacker traversed a network. If one system's clock is three seconds slower, another is five seconds fast, and another's date is set to 1979, there's a protocol we can use to synchronize all of our system clocks, NTP. Network Time Protocol. 
when a log event is generated on any device in the environment, we want to transmit that data in real time to our SIM system. Our SIM system collects and aggregates all this event data from across the environment into one central system. Next, the SIM system will normalize the data, clean up the event data from disparate systems so that all the data, the variables are comparable in the same format. So that the SIM system can now analyze all the event data that is pouring in to look for the proverbial needle in the haystack. The SIM system will apply various analysis techniques such as event correlation, statistical models, rules, etc., to look for errors and anomalies. SIM systems will also retain log event data for long-term storage to enable longitudinal analysis and tracking, and to meet contractual or regulatory requirements for log retention. And finally, when log event data is no longer needs to be retained, it can be securely and defensively destroyed. Continuous monitoring, or sometimes referred to as continuous security monitoring, CSM, is the process where an organization identifies all of their systems, identifies the risks associated with each system, applies the appropriate controls to mitigate the risks, and then continuously monitors the controls to assess their effectiveness against the ever-changing threat landscape. Obviously a good practice. All right, and that is an overview of logging and monitoring within Domain 6, covering the most critical concepts that you need to know for the exam. Want to learn three of the most common mistakes people make when preparing for the CISP exam? And of course, most importantly, how to avoid these mistakes? If the answer is yes, you should check out our free guide here at deskcert.com forward slash three mistakes to avoid. Link is in the description below as well. Thank you.